science that I'm involved in, in Antarctica, relates to what I would call scientific discovery. It's, it's exploration. So we go to parts of Antarctica where there's no knowledge. It's one of those areas of science where we are filling gaps still in our, in our knowledge and in maps of the last and least explored landmass on our planet. There are places in Antarctica where you can stand on top of the ice and be more than 200 kilometers away from any point of data about the land that's underneath you. We know more about the surface of Mars, about the surface of Moon, and actually about the surface of Pluto than we know about the underside of the Antarctic ice sheet. And in some parts of the Antarctic ice sheet, we know nothing. And we uncover topography, mountains and valleys and lakes, sometimes rivers and things that we'd never seen before. And although that information is extremely valuable to our ability to understand how the ice in Antarctica flows. Well, some people are curious just to know why there are so many interesting features underneath the ice in Antarctica. There are over 400 lakes underneath the ice. And then when you consider the Antarctic continent, of course, it's very cold. The surface air conditions are maybe in the middle of East Antarctica, minus 60 degrees centigrade. How is it possible that water can survive when everything's so cold? And the fact is that ice is an extremely good insulator of heat. The base of the ice sheet is warmed by geothermal heating. Background levels of geothermal heating, a type of heating that we get in London, and that's enough. You take the lid off the Antarctic ice sheet, you take away the ice, and what you're left with is a continent less like others on the planet. Some of the things that I've been involved in relate to understanding about past changes in Antarctica. They also relate to understanding about modern conditions. It's a huge ice mass. It contains enough water that if it all melted, sea levels globally go up by about 60 meters. And um, we should be concerned about it melting. Of course, we should be concerned about that because even if a tiny proportion of that melted, then a meter or two of sea level change is going to be a, a, a real problem for us. So we have, need to understand lessons from the past to help us understand about what the future is going to, to lead to. Well, I have a team in Antarctica right now, and as we speak in this cosy office in London, uh, there are people sitting on the ice uh, acquiring data and sending me emails. It's very kind of them to, to do that. The challenges to doing research in Antarctica, uh, they're considerable, and the problems are kind of obvious. It's cold, so things don't work. There's no infrastructure. You've pretty much got to take things with you, so you have a limited amount of resources available. It's, it's very much like being in space exploration. If you consider yourself being on Mars, Right. You know, whatever you're looking at are your resources. You have a harsh environment. You can't survive outside of it without the protection of the clothing that you're wearing and the accommodation that you have. Uh, and there's scientific things to do. So it's, it's very unworldly. When you do an Antarctic research, it's very important you keep sense of humor. It would be a desperate place without, without being able to do that. And I think that the type of people that are attracted to working in Antarctica have to have that as part of their, the makeup of their, of their character. They, they have to be people who are pragmatic, but also see the funny side of things and keep cheerful. It's not a funny business, right? It's, it, you're really not there to, to enjoy things, but there are moments, of course. I mean, there are things like when you're, you're doing hot water drilling deep into the Antarctic ice sheet, and in doing that, you're creating, you know, like a tub of hot water at the surface of the ice. Right? It's nice and steamy, and that's quite interesting, having a, having a bath in that, especially when you're washed for about three or four weeks. It all sounds very British, uh, doesn't it? But that's the sort of thing that we do. But you can savor those moments. I mean, uh, Antarctic research is, is amazing. It's a real privilege and honor to, to do work there. It's easy once you've done it once or twice to get a bit blasé about it. And it's wise that we don't forget how lucky we are to be working in an environment which is so wonderful and so detached from the rest of our planet. So it's a remarkable thing.